Hey, I want to talk to you today about inheriting a house and I read a great article that I want to share with you and it was about five things you may not know about inheriting a house. And so number one is existing debt and bills will ultimately trump sentimentality. And what that means is when you inherit a house, you've really got three options, don't you? You can sell it, you can move in, or you can rent it. Those are the three options you have as the new owner of a home that you've inherited. However, if you have uh, siblings, that's not always so easy because a lot of times one of the siblings might need more money than another one or may have a, a need for their own bills to be covered and they don't want to rent the house out. They want their money out of the house now. And so that causes tremendous uh, tension and stress in the family if you're going to try and move forward. So most people uh, opt to sell the house because like I said, existing debt and bills will ultimately trump sentimentality, meaning that your own bills and your siblings' bills may say, listen, I get it, it'd be nice to rent the house, be nice to hang on to it for a while, but I've got bills to pay, and they start pushing to get that house sold. So that's one of the things that'll happen when you inherit a house or if you inherit the house. Number two is you make it huge tax breaks by selling your house, but only if you sell it soon after you inherit it. The tax basis is based, uh, the value of the home is based from the day that you own it to the day that you sell it. Now, I am not an accountant. I'm not a professional accountant. You want to talk to your accountant for that. But I tell you that most states and laws have it so that the value of the home is set on the day that you inherit or the day of the deceased uh, owner of the home. You then inherit that house. So the longer you take to sell the house, that might increase in value. So you wanna have huge tax savings by getting rid of that house or making a decision about it as soon as humanly possible. So the longer you wait, the longer that house, the value may go up and you'll be taxed on the value as that house goes up. That's something that most people don't know about a house. Number three is you might get hit with hefty taxes. Let me explain. I wrote this down because it was a very interesting number that the government has come up with. Most people won't have to deal with federal taxes because your estate has to be worth $5.43 million. Who comes up with these numbers? But if your estate is worth more than $5.43 million, you'll have to deal with taxes on that property. However, state taxes are different. So state taxes, you're gonna pay the tax rate based on the state that you live in. Now, if your home is in New York and you live in New York, when you inherit the house, you'll pay the New York state taxes, which are significant for inheritance tax. Or if you live in, let's say New Jersey. Now I happen to know New Jersey is I think a 16% for there. So if you live in New Jersey, but you inherit a house in New York, you're gonna pay the state um, inheritance tax of New Jersey. So whatever state you live in, that is the, the rate that you are taxed on. So make sure that you understand those numbers because it could cost you a lot of money in taxes. Number four, and I talk about this topic a lot, but even a free home can be very costly. Let me explain why. When you inherit a home, it might sound like a great thing, like, wow, I, I inherited a home. And maybe it's not a great circumstance, but you've inherited a home and you say, wow, I've got this large asset that's worth you know, $50,000, $100,000, $200,000, and that's all great. But the house is not free. Owning a home is not free because there are costs like, let's assume that's mortgage free. Let's assume there's not a mortgage that you have to pay. Let's assume it's been paid off a long time ago when you inherit the house. So you think it's free, but there are still property taxes. Do you know you pay taxes from the day you take ownership of that house? Property taxes, boom, every single day you're paying tax on it. You're gonna pay insurance. You're probably gonna have to pay liability insurance if the house is vacant because you wanna be protected. If a house is vacant, that's a different insurance policy than just someone living in a home. You're gonna to have to have your heating bill, right? You're gonna to have to have your electric bill. You're gonna to have to have maintenance on the house, which means you're gonna to have to have your lawn mowed. You're gonna to have to have your uh, driveway done. And you might say to yourself, well, maybe I just won't do those things. Well, you know who'll do it for you? The town. The town will do it. And guess what? They'll bill you for it and they'll tack it right on as a lien on your house. So when you do sell the house, you'll have to pay it. So eventually you're gonna pay those maintenance costs. Even if you do that yourself, there's still a cost for that. You're mowing the lawn, you're shoveling the driveway, you're keeping it up. There's a lot to that. So remember, these expenses can make a huge dent in your bottom line on a free house. The longer you take to sell that house or rent it or make whatever decision you're gonna make on the house, the longer you take, the more it's going to cost you. You know, the average house costs somewhere around $50 a day, give or take, 
to own a home, between property taxes, expenses, and everything else that goes along with it, $50 a day to own that home. Think about that figure for a second, because every day you own a home, it's a thousand, fifty hundred bucks a month to own a home. If it takes you a year to make a decision, you're talking about significant amounts of money that come out of the bottom line, and people don't always think about it. And that leads me to number five. Number five is you might inherit other baggage. And now I'm talking about emotional baggage. When you lose a loved one, or you know, God forbid you lose a mom or dad, or you lose both, and now you have to go into a home that you grew up in and start to go through those boxes and start to pull out those photo albums and start to see the clothes and the, the crafts you made as a kid and the memories and all those things. It is really hard. It's a very difficult thing to lose a loved one. I, I know personally it's very difficult to do. But some people never get past the emotional pain to actually get that house cleaned out. They start the process once, twice, three times, four times, five, and they never quite get to it because the pain becomes too overwhelming and they just can't quite do it. And they're not emotionally ready. Some people it takes six months, some people it takes a year. You know, a few years back, I bought a home from a woman. This is early in our career. She'd owned the house for 25 years after her mother had passed. It was vacant that whole time. I remember walking in the house and seeing all the National Enquirers that her mom used to read back in the 80s. She left everything in the same spot. She just couldn't, she could not put herself in a spot to make a decision about that house. Well, you know what happened? The tax department eventually made the decision for her. And at the closing table, we had to bring more money to the table to help her to get rid of the house because she owed twenty-five dollars or $30,000 in back taxes because all those costs still pile up. So while you're dealing with all the emotional baggage and emotional decisions and you, the longer that you put off that hard decision, all it's doing is impacting your bottom line. And my belief is that your family wanted you to have as much as they could out of that asset. They don't want you to lose the money that they had in the asset. They want you to get as much as you can out of that. But the longer you take to sell, it only comes out of your bottom line. The house will, you know, if, there, if life is not in a house, the house will die. The house will just shut down and it won't be good. It'll deteriorate and it won't be worth as much as it is if you sell it right away. So those are five things you may not have known or thought about when inheriting a house. However, if you've inherited a house and you say to yourself, okay, I really don't want to go through all that. I want to make a quick decision. Call us. Call us right away. Text us. Reach out. Email. Reply to this. We want to make you a cash offer that makes sure that you don't have these headaches. We want to make it very simple and very stress-free for you. That's something that we pride ourselves on to make sure we buy a house, it's a stress-free experience for you so you can move on with your life. If you inherited a house, it's because somebody wanted you to have that value. Make sure you get as much value as you possibly can because that's what they really wanted for you. Give us a call today. We'd love to see if we can help you.